Hey guys, Brain Hole Build Show. Got a solution for some of our big projects. It's called geothermal. Come check it out. You may remember that a number of our big jobs that we were working on, that Italian Revival House, Thistle Hill, the great 1970s house, all had a crazy HVAC system with a chiller, okay? Now, a chiller is designed for big commercial buildings, okay? And so they ended up doing chillers on these things because it took up less room and it was more economical than a conventional system. Now, a conventional system is, you know, let's just say this is, you know, house A and it's 3,000 square feet, okay? They'll have, you know, we all have, and I have in my house, a little compressor outside here and then an air handler up here and through the process of Freon, of that system we'll, we'll talk about, they heat and cool this house, okay? Now, now the system that everybody uses is the Freon-based system, and the Freon-based system is basically compressing and expanding Freon gas, makes it really hot or makes it really cold. When it goes through that process, and a heat pump reverses it depending on what you need. And so, in this situation, you have a Freon gas hap happening and going, and, and traveling from here to there, okay? The depending on whether it's heating or cooling. And typically it comes outside here and there's these coils and there's a fan and that fan is blowing air across those coils to cool them off, okay? Now, in a big house, let's say now it's 30,000 feet just to make it easy, okay? Right, now we've got a bigger house that's 10 times larger, right? What would happen is, is I would need to make room for 15 of these things, right? And all of a sudden I have, and because they have to be three feet apart, I almost have a field of compressors out of my house. And so one of the reasons why they put those chillers in is the chillers maybe are this size, right? And they, it's a water cooled system. And basically it's taking that Freon and it's cooling it through water, okay? The water's running across it, they're blowing fans across it, it chills the, chills the system. Now, a geothermal system, okay, basically, instead of cooling it with a fan or with a chiller, okay, it cools it with the earth, okay? It's a very energy efficient way of doing it. And so on this house, we end up drilling these holes, okay, 400 feet deep because the, the earth is a constant 55 degrees temperature, okay? So I can take the heat that was coming off that, that Freon generation, run it down into the earth, and by the time it gets to the bottom and by the time it comes back up, it's 55 degrees. Even though it may be 110 going down, it's 55 coming up, okay? So what we have just done is instead of running electricity to run this fan to cool these air, right? We've run it into the ground, okay? So my property, I don't have any compressors on my property. So the, the Italian Revival House, the big chiller we had on the side is gone, okay? And so what we did is if you look at the front of that house, that driveway area, okay, is where all our holes are, are drilled. Now these holes are five inch holes. I think they're 10 or 20 feet apart. Little water well hole, okay? And these one inch lines are run down into the, into the earth, right? And so that's what's cooling it. And so here, here's our Italian Revival House, right? And our old chiller system was right there. We now have these pipes over the front driveway that we'll cover up that all run to this system in the basement and runs much more efficiently and coolly. Now, the other thing that happens is these things will run down and they're about five feet from the top of the ground, okay? Five feet here. So when they go vertical here, then they go horizontal here and go up into the house, but this keeps you away from Encore, electrical company, gas lines that are usually two to three feet down, phone lines, nothing's gonna hit these lines, but they can be repaired if they are, but it's a very durable, long-lasting system. Now, the genius of this thing is not just how small it is, how compact it is, but the equipment lasts longer, guaranteed to last 25 years, the lines to last 100 years, it's very green. We have a pump in here that's pumping this thing down, but we don't have the electricity. And think about this, it's gonna be 106 in Texas today, okay? How do you cool 
you know, these lines coming out there when your outside air is 105 degrees, 106 degrees. So this isn't a very efficient way of cooling. So the geothermal system is much more efficient, okay? Like the return on the investment is like 10 years, okay? That Because this is a more expensive system, right? Just to drill these lines, it was over $100,000. And so it's expensive to start, but the great thing in Texas right now, I think it's a federal program, is that until, nine, until 2032, you get a 30% tax break on your investment. So like if we heat and cool a house that's 15,000 square feet, our HVAC estimate is 200 to $300,000. The geothermal system is $420,000, but we get a 30% tax break. So it's now down into the $300,000, just under $200,000 range. So it's comparable to the conventional system. I don't have all the compressors. It's much more energy efficient. It pays for itself in the long term and even pays itself back, right? And so this is a great, great system. It's quiet. You don't have compressors buzzing outside your bedroom window, right? It is a system that I think is going to be taking over. And right now it makes most sense for these wealthier or, or bigger houses. But soon it's going to be available. My, this is a Brent Hall prediction. Soon it's going to be much more efficient and almost a demand of a way to go because it solves so many problems. It's such a long lasting system. And if you watch my video on the life cycle costs, this is one of those systems that, yes, it's more expensive, but it pays for itself in the long term. And when you look at the life cycle cost of a geothermal system over a conventional system that you're going to be replacing that isn't more efficient, things like that, it begins to make a ton of sense. So you can use it to improve your water heater. You can use it to heat your pool, right? You can use this stuff because we have, instead of sending it into the ground, right, at about 100 degrees to cool back down to 55, you can actually put a tank and heat your water tank. Now, water temperature is typically 120, 130 degrees when it comes out of a water tank or something like that. So it's got to heat it up a little bit more. But if you have a tank on the side, right, that's 100 degrees, and all it's doing is sending it to your water tank to be boiled up to that, it's a much more efficient way of heating water. Same thing with your pool. You can send this into your pool, run it around your pool and heat your pool. And you extend your, at least here in Texas, you can extend your time which you can use that from early spring until late fall. It's a great system. There's great things you can do with it. It's very efficient. Maybe the only downside to this is in the firm that we're working with, Miller Engineering over in Dallas, they're doing 30 of these a month. And on small lots in Highland Park and in Preston Hollow, there's different ways. You don't have to drill down. If you have a large property, you can actually do horizontal lines. There's people that if they have access to the aquifer or to a lake or something like that, they can have an open line where actually they're pulling water from the lake and putting it into the system as a cool down method. So there is a number of different ways to do that. Maybe the only downside is just that in order to do a house as big as, as big as the one over there, the Italian Revival house, we needed about 25 holes. A lot of lots don't have room for that. So if there's one negative for that, these have to be separated and apart because you don't want to run these right next to each other because you're going to heat up that whole space. You're not going to be able to cool the water when it comes down, right? Because you'll have heated up that whole area and it's no longer getting it to 55 degrees. Okay, guys, so summing this up, I think geothermal has huge potential. It's green, it's energy efficient, it pays itself back. There's so much, it's so adaptable to so many things, so long lasting. It's something that you should at least keep an eye on. If you don't have these big projects, if you don't have that stuff, realize that geothermal is a great way of providing your clients a lot of solutions, right? And so there's so many good benefits. I think you're going to see it. And that instead of just being on the big houses, you're going to start seeing on more and more houses. So check it out.